everyone. Welcome to biology class. Today, we will learn about respiratory system in humans and animals. There are four subtopics to be covered in this chapter and in this session, we will cover the types of respiratory system. So here are our learning objectives for this session. So first, we would like to identify the respiratory structure in four different organisms. Second, is to describe the adaptation of respiratory structures and their functions for gases exchange. And last but not least, is to compare and contrast respiratory structures in humans and animals. Okay, you ready? Alright, so what is respiratory structure? It is a respiratory surface that enables gases exchange to occur between respiring organism cells and the outer environment. So now, look at this picture below. Okay, so there are four different types of organisms. So can you identify the respiratory structure of these organisms? Okay, have you got the answer? Alright, stay tuned with this video to find out if you are right about it. Okay, let's begin with unicellular microorganisms. So here is amoeba and paramecium. These are the examples of unicellular microorganisms. And these organisms, they have no special respiratory structure. So, the question is, how does gases exchange occurs in these organisms? Gases exchange occurs through diffusion via the plasma membrane. This is because these organisms have a large total surface area compared to the volume of their body. So we will look further into what does it mean by total surface area to volume ratio. I have a cube here. Each side is equal to 1 cm. So to calculate the surface area of this yellow surface, we have to multiply 1 cm with 1 cm, right? So that's equal to 1 cm square. Jadi satu permukaan ini bersamaan dengan 1 cm square. Memandangkan kubus ni ada 6 permukaan, jadi total surface area bersamaan dengan 6 cm square. What about the volume? So formula untuk calculate the volume is panjang darat lebar darat tinggi. Maka isi padu kubus ini bersamaan dengan 1 cm padu. So the total surface area to volume ratio untuk kubus ini ialah 6. Okay, we have the TSA divided by the volume. Okay, see the second example. Okay, ukuran sisi bagi kubus ini ialah 2 cm. Jadi, total surface area bersamaan dengan 24 cm square. The volume is equal to 2 multiply by 2 multiply by 2 equals to 8 cm cubic. So, the total surface area to volume ratio for this cube is 3. Next, ukuran bagi sisi kubus ini pula ialah 3 cm. Jadi, total surface area bersamaan dengan 54 cm persegi. Isi padu untuk kubus ini pula bersamaan dengan 3 darab 3 darab 3 iaitu 27 cm padu. So, the total surface area to volume ratio for this cube is 2. Okey, apa yang cikgu nak sampaikan di sini ialah semakin besar organisma itu, semakin kecil total surface area to volume ratio of the organism. Ini bermakna oksigen tidak boleh masuk dengan mudah melalui permukaan badan organisma yang bersaiz besar seperti mana yang dijalani oleh ameba. Sebab itu, organisma yang bersaiz besar ini memerlukan special respiratory structure for the efficient exchange of gases. Okay? Alright. Jadi macam mana nak pastikan pertukaran gas berkesan in a large size organisms? So here are some common adaptive characteristics. 
Okay, the first, the respiratory structure must be moist. A moist respiratory structure allows the respiratory gases to dissolve in them. Second, the cells that lines the respiratory surface are thin ataupun one cell thick tak perlu nak tebal nipis sahaja okay so this is to allow the diffusion of respiratory gases to occur efficiently and then respiratory structure also surrounded by dense network of blood capillaries except for insect so this blood capillaries will allow the efficient delivery of respiratory gases and fourth is the respiratory surface has a large ratio of total surface area to volume okay it is for the efficient exchange of respiratory gases jadi empat Adaptasi ini, empat karakteristik ini sangat penting untuk memastikan the efficient exchange of gases supaya pertukaran gas itu lebih efficient okay? dalam organisma yang bersaiz besar.